Hey everyone, and welcome back. For the next couple days, I'm going to be working on my dad's interior in his 55 oval window. 55 was the last year for cloth interior, and they used a product called Bedford Cord. Yeah, let me see if I can get a good zoom in of what that looked like. It's a really, really cool material. Made in Bedford, England, and you can still get this, and it's about $100 a yard with shipping. So we are not putting that back in the car, even though that's what we want. And these are the original door cards. So both of them are stamped. Um, we have a couple of pieces of the original uh, upholstery. I have the seats back there. We have some spare parts for the chrome. And then this little chrome ashtray, I have taken aluminum foil and lemon juice to to kind of clean it up a little bit. Still got a little bit of pitting on it, but cleaned up pretty nice. So my plan is to start with the door cards and make a pattern. We're going to use masonite and cut those out. And they stitched right through it. I don't know that I will do that. I probably uh, will just find a way to attach that without, without uh, abusing my machine quite that much. Because the masonite, I think, is probably a little bit thicker than, than this original door carding. Right there is the thickness of it. Get the camera to focus on it. There. So that is kind of what I'm doing for the next couple of days. And I hope that the material we have picked out, let me go grab it real quick and I'll show you. So this is kind of what we've decided to go with. And this is a Sunbrella material. It is a Sunbrella taupe upholstery. And I got it at salerite.com. Awesome company. I am a huge uh, supporter of them. They're a local business. I say local, they are in Indiana. And we have compared this and a couple of other samples to the paint that's on his car and the headliner and all of that kind of blended together. So, and you can tell it faded over time. So this was pretty close to the, the original color. And I think we're pretty close. It looks closer in person. Actually, the camera's kind of throwing it off a little bit. But that's what we're going to go with. There is kind of no right, wrong direction on this, so that'll be nice. I will probably try to keep it a little bit linear, but uh, that's what we're going to start with. So let me get a couple of those door cards cut, and we will pick you up once I have those cut. I won't film probably all of this. It's going to be kind of boring. So uh, all of this mess will hopefully be out of my garage by next week. Oh, and I failed to mention, we're trying to get this done for Fun Fest, which is in two weeks. So it looks like the old ones had kind of like a batting. It looks like kind of seat batting. That's behind the f original fabric. I'm going to have to, I don't think I have any of this uh, here, so I'm going to have to go buy some of that or get some kind of batting to put behind there. And then when they went to the vinyl, it looks like... Uh, <laughs> they just took a shortcut and said, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. So they took that out. I think in order uh, for this to look right, I'm going to have to probably go see if I can't hunt some of that down. I used to have a big roll of this, but I don't think I have any more. So hunt some of that down so that we can make that look like it should. So I'm putting together Dad's uh, rear panels. And initially... I had just double stitched. I don't know if you can even see that. I'll try to point it out to you. There's a double stitch right here. Initially I had just done that and I double stitched it to try and make it stand out more and I just wasn't happy with it. So then I just sewed straight through the masonite and much happier with that. Got a little bit off right there. Uh, I think I'm just going to roll with it though. So let me sew this one and we'll see what it looks like. I got one door panel done. Rear, not really door panel, but the rear card that goes in on the passenger side. Uh, I think adding the piping up on top, that's what it had from the factory, uh, really helped that. And I definitely think going through the card uh, really made that nice. And then added the chrome strip on there. So that one is ready to go. The clips are on it and it's ready to put in the car. So moving on. To the next one. I don't know that I'm going to be able to uh, 
put the camera where you can see or not, but I wanted to just show you how that my machine just plows through that. This is masonite. Uh, <laughs> and I actually kind of didn't know what to expect. So let me pop you in the stand. It's going to be a little bit jiggly because I'm going to have to set you up here on the on the sewing table. But uh, I'm going to show you how this thing just kind of goes through this. We have nicknamed this she machine Big Bertha. Even old Bertha was bequeathed to me by my mom. And uh, it's just a beast of a machine. Now watch, I'll probably break a needle or something now that I got the camera rolling. I have my light down low because it's kind of hard to see uh, my line on the board. Got to kind of get it started so that it will feed under the or feed dog. Sorry. Now that is a mean machine. All right, moving on to the front door cards. The back door cards really aren't door cards, I guess, but uh, panels. And I only have one of them, and so what I'm gonna do is just make one, flip it the other way, and that'll be the other one, basically. So just make cut out two exactly the same, and they should flip to the opposite side. And only the driver's side had a pocket. So we're gonna put that pocket back in. Someone has cut it out probably because it started to sag because the elastic tends to go on those. So we'll mimic this. Uh, they've been covered in another vinyl piece and that's kind of what preserved them, I think. But the positioning on the 55, the door handle window crank positioning is different than other door panels. Um, so, and they had a chrome strip again that ran down the middle there. So I will uh, take this one apart. I just want to get a quick video of it before I tore it apart, though, because it's original. Pretty cool. I think I could probably get most of that staining out of there, but it's starting to kind of wear away up here. And, that, you know, that's where the window crank, so you're cranking your window, so you're rubbing your hand against that. But look at that worn spot up at the top. Can't mimic that. Get that apart and get the card made. I'm being entertained by my four-year-old. Just want to show on the back where that's kind of proofrated and separated. That's that's what I'm actually afraid is going to happen on the ones that I have made, but hopefully that won't happen right away. There's the back side of that door card. People were asking why we didn't just buy new upholstery door door cards and um, seats. Well, it's because for 55 they. They're just really not available. Uh, you can get them from Wolfsburg West, and it takes, uh, you have to special order them, and it's about $3,000, so that's why we didn't do that. I'm trying to figure out how they did that pocket, and it looks like they just, there's a layer of piping stapled to the card, and then there's like a piece of cardboard on top of it. So I think the piping is, must be sewn to the card. I don't know to take that apart a little bit further to kind of figure out how that's on there. Pocket piece was, so there was a, a gathered piece here that then tucked in, so there's actually a couple pieces of fabric, layers of fabric here. The outer door card, which is this piece, the inner pocket, and then the flap that's elasticized. Yeah. So I got that all apart. I'm just trying to figure out kind of the assemblage order. Looks like there's a slit cut in the card on each side, and that's where the elastic ran through. This piece is actually glued to the board. And then the gathered piece, which has been cut out, was then sewed around the border 
of this piece that's glued to the card. Okay, so I think I've got that kind of in my head. And it looks like they gathered one direction. So they just gathered this way rather than doing like a double tuck. Uh, so I'll count how many pleats that was. And we'll make sure we try to mimic it as close to the original as possible. So then on the door portion, basically what it consisted of was a piece that then folded in and it is sewed to a piece of masonite. I'm not gonna use masonite, I'll probably use leather because it'll be about the same uh, thickness as this. And then, so that piece is sewed to that, then it's tucked in, okay. And then that was stapled on top of that piece. Clear as mud? <laughs> I ripped that one getting it off. It's nice having a pattern though because you can kind of see how they did it originally. I know there probably aren't a lot of older ones out there, but I thought I would film as I went so that we could maybe see how this is really supposed to go back together. All right, enough rambling. Let's get the door card cut. Again, I need to make two of those and then get going on this. So it looks like the original door pocket had 10, 10 tucks in it from what I can count here. And they all went the same direction like I had mentioned before, it's not a double tuck. So I have added 10 pleats to mine and we're gonna pin it to uh, my piece. This is, the background is eight by 12 inches, if anyone cares. So I'm gonna pin that piece, the, my tucked pleat piece, pleated piece to this one and sew that down and then we will uh, glue that to the door card and everything else will go on top. Got the pocket all sewed. I'm gonna put the elastic through. One little trick my mom taught us was you can put a safety pin through your elastic. They actually make a, a tool for this. It has a grabber claw on it with a slip ring that you just slide down to tighten it. But a safety pin works fine too. I'm just going to feed it through and grab it with my, push it with this hand through the fabric and then grab it with my other hand and pull it all the way through. And it's going to be a little tight. I cut it just a little bit long so I wouldn't fight it at the end. And then we'll pin it on the back side of the board and that'll be our elastic pocket. I have that door pocket done, door panel done with the pocket. This is the driver's side door. The uh, window crank and door crank are over here. They're cut out on the board. They just aren't cut out of the fabric. I wanted to wait till we make sure that those are lined up correctly. But the piping's all in around the edges. Chrome is on. Need to erase my white pin lines on there, but other than that, that card is done. The other one doesn't have a pocket, so it'll go a lot quicker. So I'm just going to sew. As they say, hit it and get it and get the rest of this stuff done. I'm not going to Dad brought the oval over and he's having me put the door cards in. I got one seat in there. I think that looks pretty nice. He's having trouble. We used I used an old door panel and around the edges where these uh, little divots and spots are for those to go in, uh, the door panel as over time kind of curl just kind of kind of curls up and so I should have used a piece of wax paper or something to trace a pattern on that, but I didn't. So now I am left uh, trying to make the ones that I made work because God knows I don't want to be redoing those. And I think I can make it happen. So I've gone through on the driver's 
panel and readjusted all of them. And what happens is the piping, I don't have a, the correct length of staple, and so the piping starts to peel on the uh, on the edges, and that needs to sit, you know, right against the lip of the of the door. So I'm going to go through and try and get that one on there, and then I'll pull off the passenger one and put it on. So I'm in the back of Dad's Oval on another hot day, and I'm putting in, got the driver's door card all in there, and I'm putting in the back ones. And I just wanted to point out something that sometimes when you use a, like I said, I used the old door card to make the pattern. You get them a little bit, get the holes for the uh, clips a little bit off, but you have this distance here, okay, as a radius, and you have this circle you're working from. So you can pivot quite a bit by just moving this to either side. The other thing that you can do is you can take the clip itself and actually bend it out or in to adjust the hole. And you can get about a half inch of adjustment without digging out a hole, a new hole or anything like that. So you can just pivot this around to a different side, tip this in or tip it out and get quite a bit of movement because I'm trying to put that on something I can't even really see. All right. I did put a couple of sound deadeners. We've got one um, on the driver's door and then I put these triangular pieces. Uh, they're made by 3M. They just have a sticky on the back. We use these in my bus. They worked great. So we put, we put one of those behind each of the door cards too. And getting a little bit of a glare. I'm trying to keep you out of the sun here. There is our rear door card on the driver's side. The seat will cover this right here. I'm running out of those other clips, but I have these. I actually like these a little bit better because when you're making uh, substitute door panels, this distance is longer. So you have more area for error. You have more room to mess up on getting those uh, in the exact right spots. So I actually, if you have any of those old clips kick, kicking around, I like those better. I think these are the newer type. These break pretty easily. I don't like them as well. And these actually aren't as hard to get the door card off, I don't think. These kind of catch. I don't know if you can see the shape of those. Oops, or not. They kind of they kind of want to catch when you want to take something off and on all the time. So I'm going with those for this door panel. I don't know why my camera is not focusing. There we go. Alright, so we gotta get that one in on the passenger side. Thanks for watching everyone. As you can see, we got that one in and I got the seats done. You'll be seeing the seats in an upcoming video, I hope shortly, and I'll catch you on the next one.